welcome back to my channel now just a quick one um i noticed some people still send me messages about the links uh regarding to the the chemicals and um you know the products that i talk about and i think you don't really reach the description box below so when you go to youtube underneath the video there is um, a section that is down here where i'm pointing right now go there and open you realize there's a description box description box is where we put the information about the video so when you go there you get to see everything right from what i'm talking about here to my editors uh, my editing software to the music i use to the products that i have linked and the related links regarding my videos so um anything that i mentioned here i put them in the description box so before you dm me to ask me about um, evidence of the chemicals that I'm talking about please make sure to go there and then you'll find direct links to um, reliable sources so back to today's video in today's video we are talking about dye number five this dye um, I've talked about before on my channel I just decided to add this to make it um, a part of the series so this dye is none other than tancho hair dye if you haven't watched my previous video about that that was just like a reaction video not really like a precautionary video um a reaction stroke precautionary slight precautionary video so i'll link it up here and then you go check it out today we are deciphering um into details like what i did in episode one two and three so let's get right into it first off they have their ingredients on the box and the manufacturers as well as the cautions and how to use them. Now when you buy the okay, so this is how it looks inside. Let me take them one by one. We have so you have a, a measuring cup. And then you have you have the gloves and you have the what is this right so you have i think the instruction manual we'll get right into it and then you have the easy hair set so i think this is just like the pigeon if you haven't watched my my rant on pigeon as a head uh hina black hina dye go watch episode one so yeah it has and it's actually quite full compared to i think pigeon i think and they have their expiration dates um dated in there on on there sorry so like i said this dye is also just like the pigeon the common thing they have um physically is the fact that you don't they don't uh there's no water or solution accompanying you know the powder so you just mix them with water it's written even on the box used with water how did i come by this dye a friend of mine who happens to also be my client as at that time i was using the three generations hair uh, black i always mess up this name i was using just the the dye with the black box and then the woman on top right the three generations black hair dye yes so i was using just that however i ran short of that and we were searching for you know other other dyes that i could you know quickly mix because it was the eve of the um the celebration that was Idu Fitzo as at that time. So she recommended, I said, have you tried Tantu hair dye because, before? Be, because um, she she did uh, some designs from one other Hina artist and the person used Tantu hair dye. And I was shocked. But due to my ignorance, I also didn't know. So I bought it because I had clients in line. So I had to, you know, fast track get you know the designs done and yeah so i bought this dye and this dye contains uh now that i know and i'm also trying to you know elaborate on the safety of you know using certain dyes that can be uh, harmful to clients i'll just decipher what it contains and you know the precautionary measures and you know so this dye is available everywhere um 
in cosmetic shops because it's a hair dye mind you which is used or which has been used as a replacement for black henna dyes in ghana here it was produced by or manufactured by mandom corporation in japan yeah let me read it for you manufactured by pt mandom indonesia industrial town bekasi indonesia okay it was made in indonesia sorry but licensed by mandom corporation in japan and it contains the powder contains cellulose gum sodium carbonate carbonate sodium carbonate peroxide ah, malic acid paraphenylene diamine talc sodium carbonate again paramethyl aminophenol sulfate my eye ah, is just so it contains all these chemicals i'll link um you know um a link below so you can go check the safety of these chemicals now i i just won't advise you you see the paraphenylene dye in mine is as i said in my previous video is what is common in all the dyes so what i'll do is i'll also link the effect of is in my episode one the link is in that description box but then i'll link it again then you go read it for yourself know that i am not concocting something for you to eat so because it's a hair dye it also comes with the easy hair set easy hair set um um then that was in 2017 there um she told me my friend told me that when they apply when they do the designs right after they do the designs and everything and then they peel it off what they apply is this easy hair set on the skin to make sure that you don't have some swellings or some um side effects afterwards but the ingredient of this hair set too which i feel is also like from vampire to fire like you don't necessarily have to use this as your henna dye but when you do use it and use this easy hair set to also counter attack i also feel like it's some um, it's some uh it also causes some reaction because i have seen it happen to one of uh, my clients before hey, honestly i have i have done a lot too because the clients that i worked with mostly were teenagers um married women um christians as well i mean non-muslims sorry and i mean i've worked with a lot of people and i started in 2009 so you can imagine 2009 i actually stopped hina designs in 20 2020 yeah due to a lot of reasons and then sitting back and you know researching on all these things because i was more into like the chemical industry i felt like why don't i you know bring this out it's not my fault okay don't blame me i'm just educating you know what i have realized that we've closed our eyes to far too long so you see right from the get-go you you get to know that is a hair dye so they teach you the directions the directions of use and at the same time they bring the portions underneath here so to summarize you know if you are someone who is lazy and doesn't want to read the what the manual has or what the manual is saying what they are saying is this is color number one so i think they have different colors i don't know i'll research on that but they have um color number one and they said it can cause an allergic reaction. My friend, my viewers, my audience, I keep going back to this. Each of the dyes keep telling you to do an allergy test first before you apply it to your hair because it's a hair dye. As to how it became a henna dye from in our Ghanaian society, so it can cause an allergic reaction so a skin patch test is necessary you know i love the fact that these dyes always emphasize on that so it means when you ignore the aspects of skin patch test and the fact that it can cause allergic reactions and you still go ahead to do it, use it and then end up in the hospital complaining about your skin swelling 
I think you shouldn't blame their products. Yeah, that's what I think. Because they have everything on the box here. So we can't blame them. And one more thing. It contains paraphernalin dye in mine. So don't use for eyebrow or eyelashes. I just love these guys. Because uh, most, uh, most of us, most of us Hina designers, Hina artists, we go to the extent of using the hair dyes. See, it contains paraphernalin dye in mine. Now, paraphernalin dye in mine is consistent in every dye product, almost every inorganic dye product, right? So we end up using, um, mixing the dyes and, you know, on the, on our brows. Some, some see i have some clients who come design them their body go for you know tattoos and then the request to do i have done for i think my sister before i have done for two other clients before that i'm not going to hide that fact that yes i am a corporate too i have done it before so it means that before we were just ignorant about it and we were not paying attention to it so for those of you who want to read into details they said Hair colorants can cause severe allergic reaction. Read and follow hair instructions. This product is not intended for use on persons under the age of 16. I know other people, other artists who, who have used tanto hair dyes for children as low as, or well, let me say as young as 10. You know, it's pants in that age group, like because it's attractive. There's no doubt about that is very very attractive and a lucrative business but i feel is lucrative is 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 um it, it is safer when we use um a henna actually organic um henna related products instead of you know synthetic this synthetic i mean dyes that are causing harm to our client if there's no reaction after 24 hours it means that it is safe to be used but if you experience some peculiarities such as swelling or itching, my main concern here is swelling or itching because that's the episodes we keep getting from clients. They come with body swollen, injuries, sores, you know. You are not advised to use it. So if you've ever had a swelling skin before out of using this dye, you are not allowed to use it. Temporary black henna tattoos may increase your risk of allergy i think i read this again in beijing hair dye that was in my episode one in beijing so is it this so i'll, I'll classify tancho hair dye and beijing hair dye as safe um, products not because it is good to continue using them as henna dyes because they've also given you precaution that don't use it as a henna dye because it contains phenylalanine dye in mind which can cause serious swelling and itching on your skin but the fact that they clearly indicate on the boxes on their manuals on their precautions that if you are allergic to these this components when you have when you've ever ever had an inch or a pinch of a reaction from these dyes, don't use it as a black henna dye. So yeah, guys, you've had it all. You've you've had it all. And um, I mean, after all this, if you still don't understand or still don't care about yourself enough to want to spend enough money to, you know, in hospitals then still go ahead and use it anyways that's it depends whether your skin is sensitive or not so one of my cousins um is also a henna uh, artist and she used tancho dye on her clients but i think i applaud her for before i didn't used to test the first time i ever saw a henna designer test it on someone's skin was my cousin professional you know you go in for an appointment before the day of the designer, so one day earlier, she runs a test on you. She mixes the powder in different concentrations and of, I mean, ratio of the water to the powder and then test it on your skin. If you are reactive to it, she won't do it for you. If you do react, you should use the organic uh, henna powder and then something we call Gishirin Lele, which we also use as, you know, henna artists here in Ghana. I'll talk about it in my last episode. She makes it very powdery, you know, um, similar to commercial henna powders that we use out there and then mixes um, gradually with the gishirin lele and then you know she does that so it kind of gives it a darker color 
as compared to um, the normal red color, bright red color of the Lozonia inemis plants, that is a, a leaf from the um, Hina plants. If you don't react, I recommend you use um, coconut oil. So because of this, I think I also use coconut oil for my hair and then my body. So what it does is that it alleviates the swelling and um, I think for some time and the itchy. So, you know, you get to, you know, observe how, you know, these things are fading away gradually. And for me, excuse me, for me, I, I have them in this bottle. Pure warm pressed coconut oil. Um, I get them on the local market. We have places that sell fake ones. I don't know how you sell fake coconut oil, but yeah, you have um pure search for pure warm pressed coconut oil and use them and get some rapid solution. I've I'm not just bluffing about it, but I've tried and tested it and then it worked. That is on my skin, but on other that's other people's skin, I haven't really tried it. So maybe if you try it, it might not be good for you. The oil that I also tried um, to alleviate these skin problems was neem oil. And that was just recently, I'm talking about just last year, I came into contact with this oil. So, you know, last year after we celebrated Eid, I then went ahead to um, dye, I think, I think, no, I didn't dye. One of the dyes spilled, yes, on my, um, on my thigh. I didn't know what to do, but I read online that if you have um, neem oil, which acts as an antiseptic, antifungal, and antibacterial, you can use it on this, um, uh, you know, the swelling and then the itch. I searched for companies that, you know, had neem oil, where I would get neem oil. The only option as at that time was to do it myself at home. But how do I know how to do it? I don't know how to how go by that. And I just needed a quick solution, a quick remedy. And thankfully, Skin Gome also came in with neem oil. This is pure neem oil, everybody. Pure neem oil from Skin Gome. It's just as the coconut oil. So they use 100% pure neem oil. So it means they use the seed, they extract the oil from the seed of the neem tree. So this is pure neem oil you are getting the only problem is that it's um it's bitter so if you don't like bitter things especially you know on your hands because if you have these reactions and you want to use neem oil on your hand make sure that you don't put your hand in your mouth and away in our last and final episode in our hina series We'll be talking about hina powder. So for those of you who don't know, who are not aware that black hina doesn't contain organic hina powder, you get to see the hina powder itself and how it's processed and how it looks like and compare them with the other dyes. Then you see how best, you know, you can make your choice when you go to do hina designs next time. Talk about your experiences, talk about your thoughts, talk about, I'm not saying that what I'm saying is 100% um, perfect but if you have something on your mind that you also want to talk about you can comment down below it's a free community just you have to be respectful and polite with your comment share to tell a friend tell a friend educate or you know your loved ones and stay tuned for our final episode on this series thank you so much for being with us thank you bye <laughs>